It's always pretty crazy when you have a half day in the market where everyone's out shopping and enjoying Thanksgiving, enjoying family and doing all those things and probably not trading stocks. And that day has the same amount of volume as a full day on a Monday. And so that's what we need to pay attention to. We need to pay attention to the fact that this volume is overall declining. And when it does pick up, we are going to see this market make a move in a certain direction. And we need to figure out which direction that will be. So today we're mainly going to be paying attention to, I'm going to bounce around a little bit, but we are going to touch on the indices. We're going to get you those daily expected moves. And we're going to make sure to point out some interesting things that I'm seeing in the market and maybe point out some things that could be forming. And let's just get right into it. Now, volume has overall been declining for a few days, and now we're starting to come in and we're seeing it go even. So when that volume does come in, we're going to see some kind of reaction, most likely. And I think that volume could actually start to come in tomorrow. Now, what we're seeing as of right now could be a continuation. Uh, maybe some FOMO is getting in, but some continuation, some squeezing going on, which is what we we're overall looking for one of those options, right? Are we going to keep squeezing or did we set a trap on Friday? Looks like we're going to keep squeezing for a little bit, and that does make sense if you think about we have a lot of data this week so the data we get this week we it starts tomorrow you know we, we do get a ton of data throughout the week the main one i would be paying attention to is friday unemployment friday unemployment date data will be very very important so why am i going to be paying attention to my daily expected moves tomorrow well i think tomorrow with data does have the ability to move this market around and now we're at a point where we've kind of gotten rid of all the divergences on the rsi so let me pay attention to these daily expected moves 60690 for the spy to the upside we do have 600 36 to the downside by the way there's a daily divergence forming right here and if we do experience something bad in the next two trading sessions that can get a little bit ugly but we always know that this market likes to go up and we're always willing to see things curl up into positive territory so something that could be really nice here as far as a trade setup goes and volume coming back in is since we do get multiple points of data if we do actually see that bad reaction and we get this move down to that five day moving average as we have violated a lot of these divergences and then we actually use that to head higher some kind of small trap throughout the day that ends up actually turning us up by the end of the day and then maybe on wednesday we're able to go a little higher and then I would really be cautious for some kind of divergence in this area. Now, that would be an overall bullish thing. We can obviously continue squeezing, but I think a healthy thing for the market to do, the SPY to do at this moment, is to retest that five and turn back up into positive territory and maybe give us a signal really close to the center line before something bad happens. That would overall be the bullish case here. Right, This 30 minute, if it continues to turn up in positive territory, you are going to continue to see tests of the five and see that thing just keep turning up. Where this gets bearish, if you really wanted to look for that kind of signal, is the two hour chart. You have to spread things out. Right, And as you spread things out, they might become more clear. And you can see that we're holding this divergence point right now, and we're starting to see some red. So if that selling is too much and we start to lose the five day, we start to cross over this two hour MACD and go negative, that's where this divergence on the two hour will come up. And that is a big deal. Why is this two hour divergence on the SPY such a big deal? Well, because when you pull up the daily, you're seeing how if I blow up the RSI, you're going to see it. That would set a point where divergence could be there for the daily. And that means we could actually be in a corrective move pretty quick. So pay attention to that because I think tomorrow has a good opportunity for volume to actually come back into this market. Whether that volume will lead to a trap to the downside at a daily expected move and we actually go to higher levels or are we just going to see that trap? be right now and have that data be the first thing that really sends us a little bit lower, maybe to test a weekly expected move at 594.62, we'll find out. Hughes, real quick, I just wanted to point out that the daily has curled up into positive territory. So what would that lean towards? A test of the high and maybe even a move higher. Right now you are testing that Hi, we did see something a little bit crazy today for the Qs, able to come outside of a daily expected move. Remember, that is always a 32% chance of happening. And we have updated expected moves. Now, this part is going to be very important. Okay, I want you to see this 30 minute from the Qs. When something bad is going to happen, right? When that weakness and momentum is going to show its face and you're going to see something bad, what do you see? You see 30 minute divergences across the way. Okay. Now those are relatively not there on the RSI. So a pullback does make sense. We're able to curl back up and go positive and we've ridden that the whole way higher. And you notice that we're very far away from that five day moving average. So I think something we need to pay attention to is we do not see that right now, which means we always have time for a new sequence of 
higher highs and higher lows. So we're paying attention to the fact that the daily expected moves, 5.19.36, and we have 5.11.22 to the downside, but look at that upside move right at the weekly expected move here. Very important because I just showed you how that daily was turning up and we're actually forming a point of divergence. If we actually do confirm that, that would mark a lot of weakness in the market. So what we wanna pay attention to here is what if we do get volume to come in, we see some kind of trap set to the downside and we end up turning up and we actually get a 30 minute outside, a 30 minute divergence outside of that weekly expected move. That is something that I will pay very close attention to. So something I'm gonna be watching in the morning with you guys is do we see this draw down and able to build back up and maybe we even see a quick move down and a quick move up and we get to see that signal. That is something I would pay very close attention to. That would form weakness in the 30 minute MACD and RSI at the same time. As you can see, these are very high up to say that this is just going to turn down and be some kind of really, really bad move down. You do not have those signals at this moment, and I want you to be aware of that. Now, if we pull up a two hour, you're gonna notice we got that blip, we turned down, but we're able to curl back up into positive territory. Fantastic. We're able to beat out this high. It's making me lean even more towards some kind of short corrective move before we get some kind of Santa rally if we're able to turn down here. Now, you will notice that we are holding that two hour divergence really, really well. So if you get this to do all of that type of price action, and you see that 30 minute, it might be a great hint that you have a two hour divergence behind it as well. And guess what? Behind all that, because that daily's curled up, if the daily rolls over, you'll have a daily divergence behind this as well. If you've taken the course, you already know what that is. It's our golden setup and we'll see if that's able to play out, but we'll watch this very closely. By the way, my wife convinced me because it's it's a Cyber Monday, she's like, just leave the course up until midnight at least, okay? So I'm leaving the course up. This will be your last chance. We said this during the live video. I like to keep it going for one more day so people can come live and ask questions. We didn't see a lot of that, but if this is your moment to get it, if you're still thinking about getting it, maybe you just missed out over the weekend, maybe you forgot about it, get that down in the description. It is 90% off. Get it while it lasts. And let's jump into some other things I'm seeing in this market. We're actually going to jump into the VIX next just to point out the fact that we have a bunch of 30 minute divergences here. And look, the times where you want to pay attention are when it's really close to that center line. And we're getting closer and closer to that center line. And this is why tomorrow you can see if this 30 minute was able to turn up, we would see a solid amount of volatility come into the market. And the thing we want to see is is this going to make the move higher? Well, if this is going to make the move higher for the SPY, for the Qs that we just talked about in the beginning of this video, then that means the volatility is gonna end up subsiding. So if this is able to turn up for a little bit of time and you see that cross back down, that would be a good sign that most likely the Qs are going to go to that weekly expected move. The thing that is bad about this signal for the SPY and the Qs is, if you curl up this signal and it goes positive, you might start a chain reaction. This 30 minute here, if that curls up, you're confirming major divergences and that could curl up a two hour. What's the problem with the two hour? You have major divergences forming right here. You even have that blip to give you that actual divergence and that could reject. And if that goes positive, then you could start the next signal, which is the four hour. And if the four hour confirms up, you have a little bit more volatility coming in than just some kind of minor pullback to a daily expected move. So pay close attention to this tomorrow. This is going to be very important. That is why I'm showing it off at the beginning of this video. Remember, if we're going to see that Santa rally, I am more so looking for a reaction and then finding that base in the spy and the cues and then ending up back down towards 1212. That is where we just pointed out, right? Fear and greed. It's only at a level of like 65 to 67. We need people to get more greedy than that. So a Santa rally is very good at doing that. Some kind of rally that maybe leads into 2025 would be very good at doing that. And that's where we're going to pay attention to the signals down towards 1212. Now, it's not only in the SPY and the Qs. We do have the DIA, aka the ETF for the Dow Jones, showing some big divergence here for the two hour, and that actually confirmed. So be a little bit cautious with this. This is a tiny bit down for the RSI, if not just a little flat, but a little bit down there, but it's really, it is down for the MACD. So just pay attention to it. It has confirmed. Now, you can always buy yourself more time. Did we have a hint that this was gonna curl down? Yes, the 30 minute, and we're gonna talk about that right here. We noticed that the 30 minute is still positive. We 
we have all of these points of divergence forming here. So if this gets violated, then we might be in a whole new sequence and maybe we need to look more towards the weekly expected move, right? We like these to show up at the weekly expected move so the options market can help us out. That's what these weekly expected moves are. They give you confidence in saying 68% chance to land here, 32% chance out here. So if I'm seeing a signal here, okay, awesome. I can maybe see a move towards a weekly expected move. If this rotates over toward the five and we just see it curl up into positive territory, we might see that move to a weekly expected move, right? We might see that trend continue as we're still holding the five. So all of this can go away. And if we do get that move higher, this is what I'd overall be looking for, something out outside of here that shows me the weakness to come and then see if that two hour is able to curl down once more with just another move higher for another trap. So that's what I'd pay attention to there. You're noticing a similar thing from IWM. If you go out into a two hour, we were able to hit that target of 242, very, very good. And we notice that you do have some big divergences here. You have some divergence on the two hour. It is on your MACD. It is on your RSI at the same time. There's no question about this one. This one is lower, so that is some negative divergence there. And what are we doing? Is this going to keep falling? Are we going to see a deeper move? Is this an ABC move down and then we're gonna go up? Or are we seeing this 30 minute get by the center line and end up reacting off of the five and see that next move higher to start, I would say maybe even a new sequence to see something like this over here, where we get that big move up, we see some kind of minor pullback and then we curl up one more time, giving you that signal outside of a weekly expected move. These are the things that I would be really paying attention to. This is how you really put that scenario in your head that says, hey, that is the opportunity I'm really looking for. You could say this is an opportunity. You could say, hey, I'm looking at an hourly chart. If that thing curls up, awesome. Positivity, we're reacting off the five and I got a little swing trade. But if you're looking for a more way to see where this thing could pivot and end up starting a downturn because we're seeing some funky signals here, that is what I'd be paying attention to some kind of well the two hours already confirmed it you first got to confirm this back up but what if we just see a divergence right here what if we go into a new trend here and we see it up here those are the points that i would be paying attention to for a lot of these indices we will be getting a bunch of data. So TLT will be very interesting because you're going up and up and up and up like this, but you see the negative divergence forming, the negative divergence forming. Now, a lot of people wouldn't read into this before data, but weirdly enough, TLT actually uh, gives these weakness and momentum signals very, very well with data. So I wouldn't be, I would be more so leaning towards TLT dropping and we actually see these yields start to find a base and maybe move up for a little bit of time, but we get more and more data throughout the week. So we we could see minor reactions to this piece of data and then see major reactions to something more along the, along the lines of unemployment. That's why I think you really need to be paying attention to unemployment. Now, if we go out into a two hour, you're just going to notice that thing is way up there. So a pullback makes sense and you're getting kind of those pullback signals. Now, you get data that can be just distributed to more strength in the TLT depending on the data. So keep that in mind. More so want to see the reaction to the data and then I'll react to myself. But something healthy for TLT to do here would be to retest a key level at about 93, curl down on that two hour, right? Curl down on that two hour, then see the next move higher with a simple swing trade to the upside. Tesla is one that I think you have to be aware of the two hour crossing down here. If the two hour crosses down, that is a very ugly signal at this point. So just be very cautious with Tesla. If that two hour does cross down, it will lean towards this daily pulling back more so than it has right here. And we see this move, it's just a, it's a big move, right? And so you'd hope to see some kind of retracement of it before making the move higher. Something that I always like to pay attention to is my little golden pocket that comes in right around two, uh, 266 to 267. So that's where I'll be paying attention to Tesla. But really, I can just sit back, relax. If this even wants to make the move higher, that's fine. Maybe a little 30 minute diversions pops up in here outside of a weekly expected move. And then we actually see that thing pull down. But the simpler trade would just be, hey, does this get down by the center line? Does it curl up into positive territory? Do I see the swing trade available for Tesla? I just really want you to be aware of that two hour signal. If it drops tomorrow, I'm just more so, I'm not saying it has to. I just want you to be aware of it because Tesla likes to move very, very quickly and it has a lot of implied volatility all the time. So I want you to be aware of that two hour signal. 
Amazon does have a signal to be aware of that two hour was likely to make a lower high. So I'm gonna keep in mind every 30 minute divergence that I see. Now, if this 30 minute just turns down, connects with the five and turns back up, you can see another move higher and you might be confirming up a daily chart at that point. So just be aware that that can happen. But these little 30 minute signals like this, sometimes if they're able to drop with some data, drop below the five, we end up going negative, hey, then the two hour might cross down. And the problem with the two hour was we we never made a strong base for that daily to really curl up and it's just doing it and that's fine that happens but if this curls down now we have a good likelihood to see what well we're reacting to a great level are we going to need some consolidation before we're able to really curl up and see a strong move from amazon that is something i'm really paying attention to and i'm just going to hop right over to nvidia just to keep this thing uh nice and good here because we're also looking for a two hour lower high from nvidia now how do those two hour lower highs form well we just showed you amazon which showed this right one two three a lot of those three point moves are where you start to see divergences for lower highs now uh, nvidia actually had a really low two hour and it is not positive amazon positive right now gave us 30 minute great 30 minute signals nvidia gave us kind of you know, the 30 minute signals there, it's just not the best, right? It's on the MACD, it's not on the RSI at the same time. So it's very key to understand that because that gives you more, pretty much it goes like this. Amazon actually gave you the signals at the same time. So the two hour has likelihood to see more positivity. Nvidia is not giving you them at the same time, which means it is even more likely than Amazon to see a lower high in this move. But do we see lower high signals? No, but this is where it adds into, hey, what if the cues do pull back to a daily expected move? Nvidia suffers for a bit and then that turns back up into positive territory. And then you see that weakness and momentum. Then you see some weakness and momentum. That's what I'd be paying attention to for a lower high from nvidia if you are not going to get a lower high from nvidia you're probably not going to see those or they're going to be able to curl back up after they curl down if you are going to see a daily just turn up out of nowhere then that would be your signal hey the daily's turning up okay we're above all these moving averages we're closing on the daily above them we're closing above 141.12 we can go test the high and go make a new one but i would be very cautious because Right now we are seeing, I think retail really push this market higher. And then we're going to see if that creates a triple divergence on the daily MACD for Nvidia. AMD, we talked about the fact that this is a great signal. Notice that it's not great until it is on the MACD and RSI at the same time. If I zoom out this RSI, you're gonna see it's at the same time here. It was here on the MACD but it was not on the RSI. And that's why we said, watch out for the lower high. That's very important. And you even got uh, some 30 minute that was like, hey, uh, I'm kind of tapping out here. With this move higher, you tried to break through and you just gave it up and you crossed down and you went negative. So we ended up going to the downside, no divergences at the low. So be aware if that wants to curl down, but this looks pretty good. And if that's able to turn up the daily, then you might see continued positivity. So the daily is rejecting the cross down. That's very, very good. And we noticed that this area would be a good chance for a pullback. Now I'm gonna go into a 30 minute just to show it. I know I'm bouncing around a lot. It's just because I have a lot of different signals going on on a lot of charts. And we can notice that we're reacting to a great level. And if you can just get a 30 minute pullback here, you can get so much more positivity out of AMD with just a little 30 minute pullback. I think the opportunity for AMD, if I missed it on the two hour cross up, would be if the 30 minute could get down by that center line, retest in some way, and then you end up seeing, hey, maybe even you would call it a cup and handle at that point. So that's what I'd be paying attention to for AMD. I just have a few more to show you guys. Microsoft is one of them. Microsoft, if you're part of Patreon, you know why I'm mentioning this one. You have a 30 minute divergence at a key level that is about to cross down. If it does cross down, right? It's not crossed down yet. This is not confirmed. But if that confirms, you have divergence right here and it is very significant on the MACD and RSI at the same time. What does that mean for Microsoft? It could have a two hour pullback. It doesn't have to be all ugly, right? It doesn't mean we're saying crash, 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 crash. It just means you even see it on the two hour here. So that can be a move that really scares people out. But if that's able to turn back up into positive territory, we can see good things. This is overall a sell zone. It is a very big sell zone, but it is a sell zone. And so if 
Uh, the options markets tell me, hey, this might tap out here and I'm seeing a reversal signal. Well, the better opportunity, the less risky opportunity would be not to say, hey, this can't go higher. It can, but it is risky to say it can go higher with this kind of look. You'd more so want that two hour to pull back, see that get by the center line and end up seeing some kind of easy swing trade to the upside. Microsoft is one I am watching very closely on the 30 minute. I probably will bring it up in the live videos uh, tomorrow multiple times. AMC, very, very likely to curl down the two hour chart here. You're looking at a 30 minute. You're going, wow, that is some divergences. We've seen some bad things in GME. We've seen some bad things with Mara and they're all go giving those signals as well. And it ends up confirming. So these things are confirmed, but you're not necessarily seeing the follow through for downside you'd like to see. AMC is reporting some great numbers every weekend. That's fantastic. And you're seeing reversal signal. It's just not really proving itself by cross crossing down through the five by crossing over that two hour. So if this can remain in positive territory and curl up, we can just keep seeing this thing go higher. The point that you need to get past to see something crazy with it, uh, this week is 550. We update this every single Sunday, so make sure you're subscribed. The two hour, if that starts to curl down, then this would be right in saying, hey, a two hour pullback is very likely here, and maybe we end up filling a gap before we're able to see the move higher. Now, the reason I'm talking about a move higher is because because this MACD is very, very high up. This is something we talk about in the swing trade course. The positioning of the MACD is very important because it'll tell you a lot. It'll tell us what? Is that close to the center line or far away? Well, it's far away, right? So I should be open to this curling back up in positive territory. Maybe we'll even get a 30 minute signal in here to tell us that that is going to happen for AMC. As we go over to GameStop for just a moment here, we'll notice that the two hour signals, they confirmed and that thing curled down and that had some mean selling behind it. Was it able to complete the goal just yet? Let's look at the daily. That's the daily cross. No, it hasn't. Now it's very likely to cross tomorrow. These signals love to cross down daily charts. And the last thing they want is people buying this thing up before earnings. So I would expect this to come down. If it's going to head back in the upward direction, that two hour is still positive. We need that two hour positive. What is the recipe for success here? The 30 minutes positive, the two hours positive, and the dailies positive all at the same time. That gives you a good shot of seeing something crazy and breaking through 33.28. Right now, the two hour is negative, the 30 minute is negative, or well, the two hours technically like turning down, it's still positive territory, but it's turned down in positive territory, not what you want. The 30 minute is negative and turned down in negative territory. The only thing you got here is the daily, that's still positive and that looks like that's about to roll. So if you want the recipe for success, you gotta see positivity tomorrow. And then you see stocks that you're like, hey, this might just be a simple swing trade, right? If this daily can confirm for DJT, you already have the RSI curled up above that center line. You already have the price action taking back most of the moving average, but you are below the 200. So what we're looking for is the follow through, the holding above the 200 and the follow through to really get this lagging indicator being the MACD to confirm up. And then you can see a pretty solid move here. So that's something I'm paying attention to for DJT. I felt like it was important to bring to your uh, attention in today's video since we're just talking about potential for opportunities. SoFi, a lot of people ask me about SoFi. First of all, looking at the daily, don't you think a daily pullback would be a good thing for the stock right now? Retrace a little bit, curl back up into positive territory to see the next move higher. That would be fantastic. Do we have signals that say that could happen? The two hour is saying that is highly probable. We have not lost the five day like completely. So we're really testing it right now, but we could easily see this just drop start to see that daily pullback with this kind of signal for SoFi. I wanted to pop over to Palantir as well to show the same thing. You're noticing Palantir hanging on by a thread really and you're confirming that at the end of the day but notice this just like everything else we're having a hard time losing the five so that 30 minute if that just keeps curling up you can keep seeing these things go higher okay. You are overall squeezing across the board on a lot of these type of stocks so just pay attention to that but you look at Palantir you see signals like this, what's riskier? Is it riskier here to say, hey, 
over the next two months, Palantir might be lower than this price, or is it riskier to say it's higher? And the truth is, the daily is so far up there. It got a cross down today. It is not crossing below the nine. So it's key to understand that this is squeezing and this is not able to cross below the nine. So that doesn't, I don't wanna read into that too much until I see a follow through bar, but a retrace for Palantir at least down to 58.50 would be fantastic. You curl down to this area, watch out for head and shoulders, but I don't really see signals that say this thing has to fall dramatically. So if that pulls back in any way and curls up into positive territory, we can see positivity from Palantir. Celebrity shot for Wolf. I really like this signal from Wolf. I'm seeing if it can really play out. Um, mainly paying attention to that 30 minute pulling back, that hourly pulling back and turning up after testing the five. Great base down here with the divergences going on. Great base with the daily divergences. I will be open to this making another divergence in the future, but right now the signal looks good. The short sale volume theory that I'm testing says that Wolf should, uh, or at least has the potential to. It hasn't fully uh, given me the signal yet, but it's saying that that signal is starting to turn up, meaning Wolf could see a good move here. And now we're gonna talk about the main takeaway. The main takeaway is we're seeing some crazy moves across the market, so make sure we're managing risk. The type of moves like this can get people very, very bullish as they start to say, is this the Santa rally? Are we going to squeeze higher? That easily could happen. But the riskier thing is it doesn't happen right now. And then you're convinced it's never going to happen. And in a couple of weeks, you start to see basing out signals and you're not paying attention because you're not thinking correctly. So just make sure we're paying attention to the signals, guys. That's why I showed a bunch of signals today, just to show how my thinking is going forward. And hopefully we can come back back. We can talk about it during the live video and maybe we see some of these things start to play out. Thank you guys so much for joining today. I'm sorry that it was kind of a different video. I just had to make it rather quickly. Thank you guys for showing up. Thank you for liking, subscribing, taking the course. I, I'm hearing a lot of good things already. If you want to ask questions about that, always come to the live show. It is your last chance to get it at 90% off. Thank you guys. Have a great night. Um, for tomorrow, by the way, I will be live for a little bit in the morning, but I have a lot going on tomorrow with other things. So I have to get to that. I apologize for it, but that's why I tried to give a ton of value on YouTube today. Thank you. Have a great night. Peace out.